Hey everybody, welcome to episode 72 of Making It. I'm Bob Claggett, here with Jimmy Durest. Hello everybody. And David Pachuda. Hey everybody. How's it going? Very good, very good. Tired, recouping. Yeah. Yep, back to normal. Jimmy, Jimmy tell us tell us about your, you had, a, I mean, we all traveled, we all went to Maker Fair yeah. this past week. Yes. And so we all had crazy, you know time and stuff but since you've been back you've actually had kind of a crazy time too you want to recount <laughs> that I, I got back well while i was away one of my clients said where is my shelf i'm making of this wine shelf sigmund's the pretzel woman she's a she's a friend now so i could have a shorthand with her and she said and i, I promised it to her so while i was away, i was like don't worry i'll have it for you monday so i returned back to new york city at 7 a.m like eight o'clock got back to my apartment immediately went to the shop taylor went to sleep red eye you know overnight we were both exhausted but I went right to the shop. I worked on this cabinet for her all day, got it together that evening. I was going to deliver it to her, but then I decided to wait. So the next day, anyway, that evening I drove Taylor upstate, had to turn right around and drive back. And uh, the next morning I had to load my, so by the time I got back, it was 7 a.m., drove upstate and back, which is like a 300 mile ride and got back and uh, loaded my car up, dropped off some kindergarten tables with my bro, Danny, and then uh, turned around and came back to the city, shot the airplane video all day and then edited that i started to edit that fell asleep woke up yesterday morning made a whole nother video for a different client that i'm working with and then in the evening loaded my car up and drove upstate so here i am with you guys so non-stop i actually slept about eight hours through all that time <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah that's that's not enough <laughs> yeah since being back I uh, finished editing the Ulu Knife video that I did maybe a month ago. It's in collaboration with another channel called Cook With Me. And uh, he finished his video and sent me some footage of what he was doing. And so I inserted that into my video. And that is releasing the same time as this episode. So we'll have a link to that down below. Um, yeah, the, the day yesterday was my first full day back from Maker Faire. And I really thought I was going to get a bunch of work done, and I really could not. Still recovering from the time change and and uh, just super tired. So I just spent most of the day catching up with emails and, and not shooting any video. But I'm back, in, I'm back at it now and starting the next project video tomorrow morning. Nice. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I didn't do anything today. <laughs> well, I did stuff, but yeah, I'm starting another one tomorrow yeah so i got back uh tuesday night as well really late and um wednesday morning i had my live stream and so i realized when i got you know wednesday morning i'm like getting coffee coming down to the shop and i'm like oh i have a live stream today and i have not thought of what to do on the live stream mm. <laughs> and i have you know it was just like oh last minute what I, I get? and then i remembered that uh the previous week i had started a foam uh, weapon like a prop. I saw that on my first Snapchat. That. Yeah, it's on Snapchat. That's it. Um, <laughs> and so I, I worked on that, and that, it actually worked out pretty well. It was nice to have. Like, it's kind of cool. The live stream is gives me a chance to have some projects that are not made for YouTube that can just kind of like I can do a little bit on Wednesdays and set them aside until the next week, and then I can pull them back out for the live stream, which is you know very different from. I gotta finish this for the video and get the video out and stuff. That so. sounds like a really cool system. Yeah, it works pretty well. It's yeah. it's a nice filler. And then if I don't have anything, then I can um, I can shoot a YouTube video on the stream, and people think it's really cool to be able to watch the setup for shots and stuff like that. You know, so it's something different every week, which is kind of fun. Do you know how many uh, live viewers you get a week? I mean, I must say that right. Um. Yeah. It's it's. It kind of, it fluctuates. I mean, like minute to minute, it fluctuates, yeah. but it's usually around 150 live oh, at cool. any given time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then there's a really active chat on there, which is cool. And they talk amongst, amongst themselves a lot, so I don't have to interact the entire time, but any time that I can stop and and talk with them through the chat, it's always fun. Like, they're always giving good ideas and stuff like that. So I'm really enjoying the Twitch thing. It's, it's a lot of fun. That's cool. I got a little uh, taste of Twitch this week. Me and David got a chance to... See what that's all about. Yeah, so at Maker Faire, we, um, we did a talk. The three of us did a talk on the main stage. And then we ended up doing, I guess, kind of crashing one of Jimmy's talks. 
at the end? <laughs> no, well, they just, I told you guys, they just put me up and just said, have your friends, anybody you want up there. So, you know, why not have you guys again? It was fun. I'm, I, I was, I didn't want to do it alone. It's too much time to talk alone. Yeah, it ended up being longer than the first one. It was like an hour. But it was on the stage that um, Twitch was live streaming from Maker Fair. So we got to do like a live talk, which I think turned out really well. Yeah, yeah I mean, it was I, a lot I of fun. Well, do you think yeah. people will be able to see that again? It's up there, right? It should be. It's up there. Yeah, it's up there. Oh, I watched good. it last you night. Can, yeah. um, well, we can find it and put a link to it. Um, yeah, the live streams stay, if you set your channel up that way, they'll stay on Twitch Probably not forever, but they stay for a while. I'm not sure how that works exactly. While being live streamed, a Twitch question came in for Jimmy and I asking when we're going to start live streaming. Yeah. And <laughs> I guess the answer is we're, we're looking into it and probably soon. At one point before yeah. I pass away. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I just put it down in my I notes. will also live stream before Jimmy <laughs> passes away. <laughs> <laughs> I am uh, I'm I'm past midlife, so better get hurried. <laughs> better get at it. Time's running out. <laughs> better get your streaming setup going. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's talk about the fair. Yeah. I mean, it was a huge. It was longer than a weekend. <laughs> it, <laughs> it was almost yeah. almost a week trip for me anyway. Um. Yeah. Why don't you, why don't you guys just uh, give us like a rundown of? It was great to hang out with uh, with everybody. You know, a lot of the guys from the from the I like to make stuff page were there. Uh, we got to hang out with Luis Gonzalez. And as I introduced him to everybody, everyone's like, you're the Luis Gonzalez that we hear at the beginning of everybody's podcast. And uh, like, nice. that's the very, the very one. So Luis is famous for being the, uh, the, uh, the patron of everybody's He's podcast. So amazing Luis, you know, we love you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, a, and a skilled craftsman at that. Um, so l- hung out with Luis quite a bit and, uh, got to see Lutz and, and Aragon and, and, uh, Bill Lavosi and, and everybody else and, and uh, got to meet some people. Um, I got another chocolate version of myself from Wes Wayne. So Wes, thank you for that. This time it had uh, peanut butter. And so it was great. And um, it was great. A uh, uh, couple of the things that stand out to me again, we've talked about this in the past, but shaper is getting closer to being a real thing, which is the router with the CNC. We need CNC. to talk more about that in a minute. Yeah. That's so yeah, cool. The shaper is, is is a great thing. And I introduced that to Berkey was there. Berkey said it changed his life. Like he didn't really have any like mental or emotional connection to CNC routering. And when he saw that it, he immediately got it. He's like, that is something that would totally fit in my workflow, you know, as opposed to the X carve or any of the other CNC machines. But when he saw that he immediately realized that's what I could use. So um, stuff like that, it's moments like that, that you go to make a fair for. And uh, I got a, I got a, a, a up close personal uh, showing of the Glowforge, which is the first time I got a real good chance to see it. Um, mm-hmm. Dan brought me and showed me through the whole thing, which was awesome. He literally made me write, because you write something down, draw something on the scrap, <laughs> and he showed me through the software, which was fun. And uh, got to hang out to CNC router parts guys. You know, they're friends of mine, my friend Stu, and, and uh, those guys are making ukuleles. Did you guys get ukuleles? Did everyone get a ukulele? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah, so they were actually made, they made like a hundred ukuleles during the weekend, which was amazing commitment for them to do that, and a great premium because no one's going to throw that away, you know. No one's going to like play with that and then leave it on a garbage can, you know. Like some, you know, you get premiums from every one of these boots, but that is just a real quality item. And they had somebody there playing one of them, um, and it was it was just a great great concept. And it showed four different machines making four different materials all coming together to make the the, the full ukulele. Um, uh, there was one other thing that stood out to me, which was amazing, which is something I probably will never, ever do, which was the, the drone racing. Did you guys go into the drone racing tent? Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. (laughs) That is insane. I can't believe those things. They look like they're underwater. It's amazing to me that they could actually navigate looking through the binoculars where they are in space. It is just amazing to me. Like these things make these crazy bank turns and look like they're just going to fall out of the, the sky. Yeah. So, I mean, that to me, that was incredible. And there was a big screen showing the, the POV of the drone. And, you know, they almost always instantly crashed. So it's amazing <laughs> to me that they're actually able to make three or four loops before they drive into a pole or whatever. And I stopped and I talked to one of the guys that was repairing his thing outside the tent and he gave me some some interesting information on them. He says they always break constantly. He said, you know, it's like 50% of the time. Well, he said like 75, 90% of the time they're fixing it. They race it for literally just those other few percent. 
But um, that was amazing to me that the drones have come such a, a long way. And then I went to see, did you guys see the battle drones? Did you go over to that tent? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Those were great too. I mean, t- a completely different configured drone, obviously just for, for helicopters, but just different configuration and, you know, in, in its needs and its, uh, and its purpose. So it was fun to see. You know, difference. last year, the battle drone, they had that thing inside in a bigger tent. And instead of just two drones fighting, they had, I don't know, seven or eight of them in there at the same time. And they were all different sizes. There were some big ones. There were some really tiny ones that were like, um, had nets hanging from them and they would try to fly up and get the net caught in the other one's <laughs> rotors and stuff. And they were all, that's they had cool. all sorts of gimmicks on them. It was a lot uh, of fun. I, I totally missed that last year. I didn't see that. You could, yeah. That's because you can't <laughs> see everything throughout the entire week. too much to yeah. see. It's too much. It's too much to see. And then, of course, Adam Savage gave his keynote speech, which is always pretty good to hear. And, you know, he said some really good key things, which you know, resonated with me. And uh, so it was nice. It was, it was just a great weekend. And the most of all, it's just great to meet the fans that enjoy what we do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure what I could touch on uh, that Jimmy didn't already touch on. I mean, the Shaper booth was just mind blowing. Like, I, I saw that and I knew Jimmy had already been there. And I was just like, Bob, you have to come over here and get a personal demonstration because this thing is amazing, <laughs> which we'll talk about maybe a little bit more in, in a second. Uh, so that booth was, was crazy awesome. Um, there's just so much to see. There's a huge craft fair going on at the same time. Oh, uh, the craft fair was people, great. Yeah, people selling the things that they made, which uh, just amazing, talented people. Uh, meeting everybody was was one of the main reasons I was there. It's just to to meet the viewers and the and the listeners. And um, I got to do some schmoozing outside of the fair, which was totally fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, went to <laughs> the Instructables office where their shop is amazing everything that you could ever want in a workshop instructables has and it's just places mm, unbelievable unbelievable so cool big sh- big machines little machines uh they give us a tour uh anybody can can get a tour you just have to schedule it in while you're there and instructables is owned by autodesk and uh, bob and i got to go to the autodesk office uh and got a, a little tour there and what they are is that, doing is that the auto is that the office where there's like swinging tables and stuff? It's like that's instructables. Yeah, the, yeah. where the things hanging from the ceiling. My buddy was there. He sent me video yeah. from there. Didn't realize it was yeah. Autodesk instructables were the same. Yep, and they, they have a couple different offices in town, and um, they're just doing really cool things that are like um, to to use an over uh, overused phrase. Like they are trying to change the world for the better. Like they're making really cool things to, to help people. Um, and all their software is, is free to single users and, and students and just really cool. Got to hang out with the Twitch people. Bob introduced me to them. Um, Inventables. We had a meet up with them. Um, got to see the, the new X card machine, which all kinds of awesome improvements to that and their software. So I'm excited yeah. about some of the things there. Oh man, what else did we do, man? It was just it was just fun. There was so much to take in. Yeah, I felt a little bit less overwhelmed this year than I did last year. You know, last year was like the first time seeing all that. <clears throat> I was just like, I don't know where I am <laughs> any of the time. I'm looking around, just kind of my eyes are darting from thing to thing, and it made me totally lose track of where I was in the space of the fair. But this year. I at least kind of knew, okay, this tent has this stuff, this tent has this stuff. And so I could actually pay attention to the things that I was seeing a little bit more, which I thought was nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, like some of the stuff you mentioned there, I want to go back and do some detail on some of that stuff. So like the Instructables office, you can say there's every tool you can imagine. But when you talk about the specific tools that they have, it takes it to an entirely different place. They had like, they had a five axis water jet. And the thing was, what, like five by ten feet or something? Yeah. It was huge. And they had tons of these giant CNC mills that, you know, I mean, three or four people could get inside of this thing and, like, sit in the bed. That's how big <laughs> these things were. And uh, some of them had, you know, ten or twelve or maybe even more than that tools that you could change. And so the robot would come down and you would hand it a tool and it would take it back up and lock it in. And then it would come down and get another tool. You know, so you're like kind of prepping this thing for destruction. <laughs> um, just, <laughs> it's just crazy. I mean, the machine shop was one thing. They had a full woodworking shop, uh, which was great. They had 
an entire upper level that was 3D printers and laser cutters. And like, I mean, types of 3D printing that I'd never seen before. Mm -hmm. Materials and processes that I'd just never even heard of, you know? Yeah. That's the kind of thing I keep up with. So it was really interesting to see stuff that like, whoa. Yeah. (laughs) Like, what? What? (laughs) What is that? Get a full test kitchen. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, And just so much stuff. I mean, it was crazy. People, You know, like, uh, they have these artists and residents who... I think, did you say they were there for three months? I think so. At a time? Something like that. But these artists just come in and they, they get to work in this shop for three months and make anything they want. And then there's a team of people that work at Instructables that make Instructables to go on the site. And they pretty much do the same thing for their full-time job. They just get to make whatever they want. I mean, I say this like it's not what I do for a living. <laughs> but they get to make whatever they want with this ridiculous shop. And... um and then you put get it on to make whatever you want in your carport. <laughs> that's true. I guess that's the difference. Yes, I don't have that <laughs> insane shot. I get to make whatever I want in my cave. Yeah, <laughs> but it's. I mean, it, it was. It was a really incredible place, and definitely made me want to get a bigger shop. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <clears throat> even some of the other stuff, like the the shaper. So I remember them from last year, and I saw them demo it last year. And you guys have talked about it since then, and you both talked about it this year. But finally, when David was like, you need to come over here and see, like, up up close, see this, it completely changed what I thought about this thing and what it was capable of, just seeing it. And so anybody that doesn't know what we're talking about, this is a handheld router. It's called Shaper. Um, it's a handheld router with a screen on it that's basically a handheld CNC machine. So... It has cameras, it can take a picture of the surface of the material that you're working on, and you move the router in general to the general position that it's supposed to be, and then the CNC part of it, the brain of it, moves the bit to the specific location. So Mm -hmm. they had this really fine little US map and drawn on the thing, and so you could pick a state, and we're talking like as big as your thumbnail kind of state. And it would, you could just hold this thing in place and it would cut this out while you're, and anytime you lift the router, it pulls the bit away. Or if you go too far off the line, it pulls the bit away. I was was amazed at how fast you could go right back to where you were. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It remembers, like it takes a picture of the surface and then kind of maps everything to that picture. So yeah, you could pick it up and set it back down in close to the same location and it knew exactly where it was. And, I mean, that's like the general use for it. Then he showed us all this other specific stuff that you could do. I just, I kept going, whoa, mm-hmm. <laughs> whoa. What occurred whoa. to me, what occurred to me and, and Berkey when we were talking about it, it was like, you know, we always want like a 4 by 8 CNC, but I don't have the room. But I have a 4 by 8 work table that I work on constantly. Mm-hmm. I could set that table up with this router and basically turn that whole table into my 4 by 8 CNC. Yes. By dragging this router around, it'll know, like, if I'm cutting, like, the profile of a pattern of a chair, for instance, and I have them all nested in. I recently did a video where I did these card- these kindergarten tables for Make Magazine a couple weeks ago, and the legs are all just, like, these big CNC-shaped objects, but they're all hand-cut out. I could have done that whole video with this router, and I would have eliminated a whole step and would have been even better than I made it myself just now. They would have come out more p- precise. Hmm. So. I told them when they're ready, I'll re- re- replicate that video or something like it with the, with the shaper. What I liked... Well, that's an interesting thing. I ha- Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I was going to say, what I, what I like about it is like it has different shapes and stuff built in there. So if you need to cut a circle out of the middle of a board, you just set it on right. the board. You dial in the size of the circle, whether you want to cut inside or outside the line. It knows what bits in there. And then you just cut a circle. Like That's not something that's easily yeah. done without setting up templates or uh, cutting it out with a jigsaw and, and sanding it smooth. It's like it's really cool, and um, it's mm-hmm. it's it's really it's hard to describe uh, in an audio podcast. So you should go check out their their videos on their website, and it may or may not replace your current CNC. Like you can use it in conjunction with with the CNC you already have. Uh, it's just so so cool. Yeah, and I think um, I hadn't really thought about it. So you said that Jimmy that it it actually could be. If you wanted it to be, it could be the replacement for a couple of tools. Like you could get rid of, if you didn't have, or if you didn't have a CNC big enough to do the job that you needed to do, you know, and you didn't, I don't know, depending on what bit you put in this thing, it could act as just a normal router, a CNC router. You could use it to cut out, out like profile shapes, you know, like instead of a, 
a jigsaw or I mean it could be a lot of different things. Bob, you're looking for a re- reason to get rid of your jigsaw, I know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I will throw that thing in the middle of the street in a, at a heartbeat. Yeah, I know you don't like it. Well, you don't love the you don't love the crooked cut? That's, that's oh, what about. That's really? Okay, I'll send it to you. You can you can enjoy it as much as you'd like. <laughs> you can cut through something that's only a quarter inch thick and the other side will be completely destroyed and wrong and crooked. <laughs> yep. It's my favorite part of a jigsaw. <laughs> but yeah, the the shaper was just really just mind blowing to me. That was the of the technical stuff that we saw, like of the tools and the machines. That was by far the one that stood out the most as like, this is something really special. You know, it's going to it's gonna be one of those things that makes an impact, I think. Mm-hmm. If it can get traction, you know, anytime you have a tool like that that has a kind of high cost, there's, I guess, a worry about whether, it, you know, people are actually going to afford it to give it a shot. Because I think, what did they say, 1500 yeah. ish That's they like said. That. That's what they're trying to shoot for, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, that, that is a lot of money. Um, but I think if somebody could give it a, a test, they would probably see what it was capable of. But um, the other thing, like you said, Jimmy, we got to see the Glowforge, which was, it was cool for a couple of reasons. One, because I've heard some online, some like negative, you know, they, they pushed the ship date back for the Glowforge and people got upset about it. And I think that spooked some people and they said like, you know, maybe this thing isn't working as well as it's, they said it was or any of that stuff. But seeing it, in action up close and seeing the finish of the machine, like the quality of the build and stuff, I have a lot of confidence in it. And I was really happy to see that. Um, and just talking to the team there, they are like totally into making it as good as they can possibly make it and getting it out as fast as they can get it, you know, as long as it's quality. So I don't know. It w- that was reassuring to me. Yeah. It was cool to that, see it in action. That was one of the most packed, booths in that in that building everybody wanted to see that and just the aesthetics of the machine itself it just looks beautiful like it would look really good right Mm -hmm. here in my shop so i was just gonna say i think i was saying the housing is just really the housing for the glowforge is just incredibly thick and sturdy like i was talking to him about the injection mold of the housing which uh you know gives it a nice quality feel so talking about the quality of the product in general it definitely has attained that yeah. And it, I mean, it looks and it's bigger, too. It's bigger than I thought. I just kind of I don't know why I just kind of assumed that it would be a little bit smaller than it actually is, um, which is also encouraging. You know, you don't want to, like, pay for something that you expect to be big and then you uh-huh. get it and it's like, oh, wow, this is smaller than my laptop. That's not cool. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to the to the Glowforge. Um, so some other stuff that I was really happy to have have done um i got to hang out with bill duran a lot oh bill is cool i gotta Uh, meet him i got to meet him and hang out with him of course he's a cool guy yeah yeah super cool super helpful and we immediately started talking about like collaboration stuff and actually right before this he sent me a google doc that's like collaboration ideas so there's a lot of stuff uh a lot of potential there sweet crazy stuff like totally bananas list. Hey, can, can you tell the audience? Can you tell the audience as soon as Bill walked up? What did I notice on him as soon as he walked up? As soon as Bill walks up, Jimmy looks at him and says, "Is that a Han Solo jacket?" Yeah, and I almost <laughs> fell over. <laughs> I was like, uh, I was like, "Whoa, Jimmy, really? Wow!" Because yeah. and it was it was a Han Solo jacket for a costume that Bill had made. It's yeah. a leather jacket. Yeah, really it, well made, like as if it was like the prop from the movie. Yeah, but yeah, that was. That was impressive, Jimmy. That goes back to my observance, <laughs> my observing skills. I'm very good at like remembering details when I look at stuff. I might not know what the story's about, but I know what it looks like. <laughs> there <Nice>. you go. <laughs> uh, but it got to hang out with Bill a lot. All of us did, which is cool. He's a great guy. Uh, really creative dude. He introduced me to um, Sean Charlesworth, I believe is his last mm-hmm. name. Yep. I'm so bad with last names. Mm-hmm. Uh, he works with Tested, does a lot of 3D printing stuff. And Anybody listening that watches Tested has probably seen, he did a ghost trap from uh, Ghostbusters. Yeah. And so it was cool to meet him. He made a 3D printed lightsaber that he brought for Form Labs to the booth, which was just awesome looking. So cool. Um, so it was cool to meet him. Got to see uh, Will Smith do a talk, um, which we met Will a long time ago. Sure. And he did a really good talk about supply change, which doesn't sound interesting, but it was interesting in respect to like creating technology that's accessible through stuff that's using components that are already in the supply chain. It was pretty cool. I liked it. Hmm. And uh, what else did we get to do? We went to Patreon. Yes. Twice. 
got to go to the Patreon offices. Jimmy, you didn't make it to Patreon, did you? No, I, I guess we didn't drive. We had to fly and fly right out because of the work oh. schedule Taylor and I both had to deal with. So we were only in just literally yeah. for the weekend. So Yeah, well, Patreon people are super legit. They they care about us as creators. They are like they they want us to do well and they they were super happy to have us like visit the office and not because we're us, just because we're doing this full time, you know, and yeah. they they want to support that. Um and that was cool. That was really cool. Yeah, they they just it was cool to to be there and we got to see a concert. Another creator performed at their offices one night and David and I got to go to that. And then we walked literally around the corner and went to another show that was uh, Rob Scallon, who I did the shovel guitar for, and Wheezy Waiter and his band, Driftless Pony Club, and Hank Green, Andrew Huang. It was a good time. It was a really good time. Yeah. So we got to, and we walked like a ton in San Francisco that day, plus yes. all the walking we did in the fair. <laughs> it's so it much. Hot. It's so much fun walking in San Francisco up and down hills. It's like my favorite thing in the world to do. Not. <laughs> Not. <laughs> Zing. I'd say the fair itself was just really fantastic. There, um, just one thing after another, one cool person after another. Oh, th- so I was really excited. Um, I was standing there and this kid who's maybe, I don't know, eight, nine, something like that, walks up with this little wooden box. And his older brother, who was a couple years older, and his family were right behind him. And he was like, um, I wanted to show you my Game Boy that I made. Oh, they saw that I'm like, kid. I'm like, oh, sweet. Let me see it. Okay, so this is a, a walnut box with a tiny little LCD screen in it. And he's like, yeah, it's got a Raspberry Pi inside. And I 3D printed all the buttons. And, <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> and this kid, I mean, like I was asking his dad about it. And his older brother. I said, I looked at his older brother. I was like, oh, you guys did this together? And he's like, no, no, it was mostly him. I looked at his dad and he was like, yeah, I mean, I did the woodworking part of it, but that was it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I had the kid show me his, this little Game Boy and he was super excited about it. He was telling me about all the stuff they did for it. And then his older brother was showing me, a, he pulled out a paper and he's like, this is a robot I'm going to design or I'm designing that I want to build. And he was like, show me all the parts of it. And he was like, I'm going to make this out of PVC and this part's going to do this and it's going to have a telescope that comes up. And, and it wasn't the kind of like fanciful, you know, this one's going to shoot rockets and stuff it was like a a real thing that he could probably build out of pvc and wood and cardboard and whatever and it was it was just super cool i mean like seeing kids that are actually like doing stuff like that and that are excited to talk about it and share it stuff like that was all over maker fair and that's probably the thing that i love the most is just seeing kids that are not just there observing not just taking stuff in that has a lot of value but to see kids that are showing off what they make Mm -hmm. super cool Super but, cool. For sure. Yeah. For sure. I was I was just going to say, seeing all kinds of things that I'm not normally exposed to gave me all kinds of future project ideas. And so I was taking notes on my phone of like, oh, I could I could do this. And I was wondering if you guys walked away inspired to do anything yourself. Um, yeah. You know, I made that airplane. And uh, although in my description I, I on Make Magazine, I talk about a couple of reasons why I made it. But while I was at Make Affair, just some of the things I've seen, it reminded me to make it. Something I kind of been, it's been hanging around since Steve Ramsey asked us to do it months and months back. But uh, at Make Affair, I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot I wanted to do that. So while I was there, that's why I made that airplane recently when I just got back home, which is on Make Magazine's channel today. Um, I definitely got inspired to do a lot of different ideas. Um, nothing specifically stands out, but I definitely want to maybe try and get into playing around with drones more. And I definitely want to do laser. I mean, since we started the show, I said laser was going to be my New Year's resolution, and it hasn't been yet. And honestly, I can turn around tomorrow and pick up a laser. It's just a matter of my logistics and my space. I don't want to get a laser if I have nowhere to really put it. So I've been avoiding getting one because I don't. I want to get a real one, a big one, and uh, I don't want to have it in my apartment. So until I could work a space to keep it, I'm not going to get one. And then. uh, lastly, I saw something called a tarmac. You guys see the tarmac, which is basically like a Bridgeport milling machine, computer controlled. Mm-hmm. So I could pop a piece of aluminum in it. My friend Mike's got one. And if anybody's watching my Snapchat, I used Mike's the other day. Well, Mike used his to demonstrate. So on my Snapchat, you see me filming some machine cutting out a piece of aluminum, you know, computer controlled. So it's a CNC machine that basically does 
what a bridge port does within minutes because it's computer controlled and you change the bit out for the different task. So it's it's a classic CNC machine, computer controlled, metal cutting, bridge port, milling machine. Well, you know, bridge port, I'm using that as a figurative term, a milling machine. So when I saw that, it reminded me that I can get into small production runs. So if I design another product similar to the ice pick or something in the, in the, uh, in the vein of the ice pick, a knife or whatever, I could use that machine to make my own parts. So I could actually produce and manufacture with that machine. So when I saw that, I'm like, I can take small billets and turn them into whatever that, that, that object is. I mean, even if it's just a simple, stupid keychain that has my engraving in it. I could just throw a piece of aluminum in it, makes it exactly the way I want it, throw another piece of aluminum or brass or even steel. So that got the wheels going. When I saw that, I'm like, Mm. you know, you know, in the last couple of years, I wasn't really thinking that I would ever be a manufacturer or a factory. But of course, now I am with the ice picks. So now I'm like, what is going to be my next thing? And when I see that machine, it's $10,000. Of course, it's a lot of money. But if I could make a, a precise plan, buy that machine and then figure out a way to make it pay for itself. And then, of course, I could do specialty parts for clients with it as well. So I looked at that, and that gave, that gave me a little bit of a kick in the butt to get back into the idea of learning fusion. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's actually kind of similar. Um, speaking of drones, I, I came home to a drone. I ordered it before I left. What? And, uh, yeah. What one? And the, I got the Phantom 4. Oh. So it's Ooh. like the... The best camera one. Really? Um, <laughs> can I borrow it? Totally jealous. <laughs> no, you can't borrow it. <laughs> I almost bought Are one. You crazy? I almost bought one a couple of weeks ago. Where I was at the Apple store with my brother. I'm like, oh yeah, that's the thing. And I like, I'm thinking which credit card in my pocket is not burning. I'm like, nah. and I was like, nah, 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 nah. I don't. Know. I'm just gonna fly it right into a wire, ruin it. <laughs> well, the cool thing about this one, I mean, I don't want to go through all the features. It's super cool, but it has some like. Um, obstacle avoidance stuff on it. it has cameras on the front and the bottom so if you fly it towards a wall I don't know about a wire but if you fly it towards a wall or a tree it'll stop it won't let you fly it into those things it does like awesome. air skid marks like Bugs Bunny <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty much um, anyway so I came home to that and I still haven't flown it yet it's been like two days and I'm I'm a little nervous to st- <laughs> try it actually uh, I'm nervous for you to Even try it the- yeah, even though you can't crash it, theoretically. Well, you can. You know, it's harder to crash it. Um, anyway, so I haven't tried that yet, but I'm looking forward to adding that to my filming capabilities, and that's really why I got this one. It's not going to be something I'm going to use a lot, but it is, you know, it's another camera that I can have to get a different view. By the way, stuff, we, so. we all talk about Casey Neistat all the time. Have you, have you been watching? It's been like the last six months he's been using that exact same drone for the most mm-hmm. incredible cityscapes wherever he goes. It's insane. He's like yeah. 5,000 feet in the air filming the city he's in. And then yeah. like he's like flying he did one. It's incredible. Yeah, the one today he did, I don't know if it was his drone, but he was traveling. He was in Amsterdam. He took it he with was, him. Um, did he? Yeah, and he was uh, wakeboarding, and it was flying around over top of him following the boat, and it was just a, yeah, it was a gorgeous shot. It's just like such a good perspective to have you know, that kind of like really far out view of whatever it is you're doing. So yeah. I'm really excited about seeing how I can use it when it's applicable, stuff like that. But the other side of the drone thing is that <clears throat> since I purchased one, but well, before I purchased one, everybody was always like, just make your own, make your own drone, make, you know, and I, not having ever flown one, I didn't want to make one and then say like, okay, well, did I just to completely destroy this drone because I made it badly or because I don't know how to fly it, right? So this way, I have one that I get that I know is quality, I can learn to fly on, and so the next stage, once I get my Glowforge, is to make my own drone, make a racing drone, or, you know, not maybe not for racing, but like a more agile one. Um, so it was cool to see them being flown in the racing capacity, in the battle capacity, and you know, to see how well the laser is going to work kind of got me motivated to like, okay, yes, I'm going to make my own like small little, you know, drone at some point. So that was cool. And then the other, I think just the most general thing, and I think every Maker Faire does this to some extent, it just made me be like, this is such an incredible opportunity to make functional. Yes, I'm all about functional. It's an incredible opportunity to be able to make functional things on a regular basis, but it's also an opportunity to make ridiculous, fun, 
stupid, great things. You know what I mean? Totally bananas. <laughs> it's, yeah, exactly. So I guess that's probably the biggest thing I got from Maker Fair, David. You were asking, you know, it's just like not everything needs to be quite as functional as my nature wants it to be, you know? So mm-hmm. um, I'm just going to try to do some stupid stuff more often. <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> yeah. And for, like, reference, the types of things that we're talking about, I just in Twitter popped up a thing that I saw there, um, and it's called the Beef Bot, and it's a beef jerky built... Um, I don't, I don't even know what it is. I'm listening. <laughs> I'm have, listening. Yeah, you got my you have my full attention. It's uh it's called the beef bot. You'll have to look it up. Um but it's <laughs> like a it's like a Arduino based three armed thing that moves, but the arms are made out of beef jerky oh. links. So I, you know it's like that. And like there was like people riding around in giant uh cupcakes. Mm-hmm. Yes. There's just so much crazy stuff there that's <laughs> just for the sake of making it, not for what it does. You know, not for where it fits in your life or anything. Yeah. Oh, one Make thing I awesome. wanted to mention, and I know I say it all the time, I'm closing in on 600,000 and I've gotten uh, my fans used to me doing like an anniversary thing at every 100,000. Um, I, I was supposed to do my printing press, but being at Maker Fair, my exact same printing press. Did you guys see the printing press run by the Steam? Yes. That's ex- yeah. exactly the same machine I have. Exactly the same one, same model, same castings. And it is definitely something I'm going to work on. Um, but seeing that machine operational and uh, seeing, seeing some of the shortcuts they took while they were printing made me think that I could take those same shortcuts. Because my machine's missing a couple of little details that uh, you know break off over time. But I was watching them print, and I'm like, oh, I realize I don't need these certain things that I thought I did. So it was nice to see that, and I can get to that faster than, than later. And again, I've been promising it for four years, so I apologize. But I will do it. <laughs> nice. So, David, you asked that question. Yeah. Did you have anything really specific that stuck out to you that, like, super motivating, inspiring type things? I, I wrote down a couple ideas, and I'm, I'm not going to say them just yet because I kind of want to work them out, make them my own. But there was one guy there who would uh, head his photography, like, printed on pieces of wood. Uh, he also was selling prints and, and T-shirts. And... It kind of. I've been looking for a, a way to get some of my photography and woodworking in together, and something like snapped in my brain of like seeing all his prints kind of there together. They worked really well because they're all in this same really contrasty style. And I thought, oh, what if I do a series of photos in like this uh, bunch of little squares within a frame? And so it's it's so I had this idea of just incorporating some of my photography into some builds maybe some pieces that i can start selling again and where i sell them as sets so maybe you can you can buy the the frame and you get a couple pieces and then over time you could add more pieces to it so it's things like that was just going on in my head like oh that would be so cool yeah that reminds me i don't even remember i wish i knew the name of the cnc company i'd give them a shout out but we went from uh we went from the cnc router parts with two ukuleles, me and Freddie from Blazing Nail Gun. And then we walked over to a CNC booth. Uh, I say CNC, I meant to say laser booth. And we chatted the guy up and, and Freddie said, oh, put Jimmy's name on the back of his ukulele. So the guy pulled up the typeface on the internet, downloaded it, and he wrote the rest on the back of my ukulele. And then he goes, hey, I could do a picture. And then he took a picture of me and Freddie standing. And then within minutes, he was laser etching that picture on the back of a guitar. And at this point in our our existence, we all like, we're all like, oh yeah, so what big, big deal? We could do that all the time. But just having watched the guy take a picture on his iPhone, turn around, mail it to himself within literally within a minute, he was able to set it up and print it on the back of the ukulele that Freddie had, the, like a picture of us. And in the picture is me holding my ukulele with the <laughs> duresta that he just laser etched on it, like literally 10 minutes prior. So it's just it's insane how fast the technology can work for us. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Like I said, at this point, we shouldn't be impressed anymore. <laughs> but when you think about how in the back, you know, back in the day when I was in an art school and when you guys were in art school, you know, to get anything like this done, it's like, oh, when I grow up and become a professional and, you know, I, I have money to burn, I'll be able to do that. But now anybody could do that. So it's just incredible yeah. that these things are accessible to, to the masses. 
The difference, yeah. or the thing now is, we'll see the, these product videos and their promotion videos, and they show that that whole farm to table thing. But in your mind, you're like, oh, you know, there's probably something they're not showing, or does it? How long does it really take? But when you're there and you see the things actually happen in person, that's pretty impressive. I'm always yeah. going to be impressed by uh, on-site demonstrations. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, that's the type of thing we should not be used to. <laughs> I mean, you know, we shouldn't we shouldn't be like, oh, it's just a laser printing a picture on the back of a guitar that was made on the CNC. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. This is nuts. <laughs> we should be like, what is happening? There are robots that are creating things for us when we tell them to. Right. There's a. I don't know. You guys ever listen to Louis, Louis C.K.? Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's a bit that he did on uh, Conan years ago <laughs> about and cell I phones. Love it. Yeah, <laughs> every cell phone is amazing. Is- yeah, yeah, exactly. Where he gets on the plane and like the guy next to him's like, "Oh, the Wi-Fi is not working," and then he's like, "You're in a plane. You're in a metal tube flying across the world, getting internet from a satellite, and you're complaining about that it's slow." Yeah, you know, it's got to go to space. Give it a minute. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's yeah. the line. Nice. Yeah. No, that's that's stuff that we should totally not take for, for granted and not be you know, used to. It is crazy. Um, so before we talk about the like what we're watching unless you guys have anything else you want to talk about i wanted to like specifically call out um so i lost my granddad a few weeks back and i put out a video about it and we talked about it on the podcast and i had like i lost track of the number of people that came up to me at maker fair and said i'm sorry about your granddad or that video meant a lot to me because i lost somebody recently too or you know things like that i mean i've gotten a lot of emails which is also fantastic and I mean, I really appreciate that, but to to have that number of people come up and like shake my hand and say it, you know, those considerate things to my face, or to say that it had an impact on them, was just it, uh, that touched me. So, yeah, thank you to everybody that um, you know brought that up or had something to say about it. That was really cool. Yeah, same thing. I mean, I spoke to so many guys that had just so many beautiful, wonderful things to say about me and the three of us together as our group and, you know, just the group in general and the community. It's, it's just, it's nice to know that we have friends all over the world and that this inspirational video process is, is working for so many people. Yeah. Just so thank you for everybody that attended the show and, and got the chance to speak to us. Yeah. Yeah. And had unfortunately had- there were some people that didn't get to talk to us. I heard from a guy today. He was like, the only thing I wanted to do at Maker Fair was meet all three of you oh, guys. Man. And I didn't see you. <laughs> Oh. I'm like, oh man, I'm sorry. We tried, we tried very hard to make ourselves available, um, but it's it's a huge, it's a huge, huge event. There was what 160 thousand people there. <laughs> that's like that's that. insane. Yeah, so, yeah. A, a, a couple people came up and said, you know, I have some ideas for the show, and so we've you know taken note on uh, future topics. So thank you very much. It was amazing meeting so many cool people. Yeah. Definitely. And to everybody that, you know, um, that just came to our talks and talked to us afterwards. I mean, it's one thing to run into somebody, but they like people specifically came to the fair or to our talks to like listen to us, which is silly, but really great. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, what have you guys been watching or have you been watching anything new since we've been traveling? <laughs> no. And that's why I'm going to give you a repeat. Uh, nice. So the channel I am promoting is called Cook With Meat. Uh, I mentioned them earlier. We have a collaboration video coming out at the same time this episode is coming out. Uh, as the title suggests, it's all about cooking with meat. He does it in a really awesome way. His shots are perfect. My phone is going off. I don't know anybody in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, but it's, <laughs> it's really it's, it's really cool. It's, I, it's my favorite cooking channel on the internet. His channel needs to be so much bigger than what it is because it's just it's eye candy. Hmm. But, but meat. I, it's eye meat. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> I meat. I meat. Go I watch meat. that. That's Don't a, you want to watch that? That's a new computer. <laughs> I meat. <laughs> All right. So quickly, I just want to say uh, thank you to Red Smith. He did a Jimmy DeResta inspired ice pick, which was a nice tribute to me. So Red Smith, thank you, brother. We talked about him a couple weeks ago. And also, go look at my brother John's channel. It's starting to catch some speed, and he's starting to get his stride. He's tried a couple different avenues of being crazy, but he I think he's fallen into something that's funny. So my brother John's channel, John DeResta. And then most of all, I want to say, go and look at my friends at Canoe Craft. That's a, their uh, YouTube page, Canoe Craft. 
but it's also Bear Mountain Boat. So both of those links are going to be featured. I'm going to start my canoe video, hopefully by the end of the summer. Uh, they're going to get a kit in the mail to me and I'm going to build, me and Taylor are going to do a series of doing a cedar strip canoe and some paddles. So I'm going to do my own canoe for YouTube and I'm doing it specifically to help my wonderful friends at Bear Mountain Boats who deserve all the love and respect. They're like the nicest people in the world. And Ted has, so he's sort of like the godfather of the cedar strip canoe. And he wrote the book called Canoe Craft. And that's also the name of their YouTube channel. So go look at them. And if you go and you like what you see, tell them I sent you. It should be nice. called Canoe Tube. Canoe Tube. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, you might want to get them to change that. That's pretty good. <laughs> no. So uh, Bear Mountain Boats, but their website, their BearMountainBoats.com and their YouTube channel is Canoe Craft. Cool. Nice. Um, so mine is um, a guy that, I, I mean, I've seen his videos before. But I guess I hadn't seen him in a while. Anyway, he goes by Indiana Wood Times Jones on YouTube. And um, I remember a long time ago, I think when he first started his channel, he sent me one and like asked for feedback. It was like, you know, give me some editing feedback and stuff like that. And so I probably hadn't seen any of them since then. Anyway, he, the other day, sent us a video. Um, he made a 2x72 belt grinder from scratch. And it was like a no, uh, if I remember correctly, it was a no weld belt grinder. What? And... It's that. pretty impressive. Send it's a that. good video. Uh, send me that link. I, I want to see I, I, it. It'll be in the show notes. <laughs> oh, um, I, I was just here. I'm not coming back. I was just here. I'll send it. Uh, I'll send it to you. <laughs> uh, but it's a it's a really well done video. He since the last one I saw of his, he's obviously been like improving his editing and pacing and stuff like that. It was really cool and. The project itself is really cool, and made that's a, a tool that I've wanted for a long time, but haven't really been able to justify. And so now I'm thinking, like, oh, maybe I should figure out how to make one of these myself, you know. So anyway, yeah, go check him out. Um, I guess that's it. Before we go, I want to thank everybody from Patreon. Uh, make, Build, Modify, Elijah Taylor, Dominic DeFino, John Cornwell, Luis Gonzalez, and Jeremy White are our top patrons over there. And actually, next on the list is Corey Crehan. Um, and I got something in the mail from Corey a couple days ago, and a really nice little letter. And so, Corey, thank you for that letter, and I'm sorry for your loss as well. Um, but thank you for the gift in the letter. That was awesome. So, thanks to everybody uh, from Patreon that helps support us. Yes, and thank you very much. Talks mm. to us and stuff. Um you want to help out the show you can go to patreon.com slash making it and any amount is pretty awesome yeah so we appreciate it <laughs> guess that's it for this week thanks for listening everybody we'll be back and not talk about maker fair next week well we probably will but not the entire time <laughs> you guys know i've been thanks going to therapy guys. i've been going to therapy and something i learned i love me i love me I love me and I love you too. Okay. And Dave. I'm so. totally cutting this out, but I just want to say my wife loves the beef bot. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say actually, uh, beef bot is my is is Taylor's nickname for me. <laughs> <laughs> Funny you should bring that up. Don't don't cut that out. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs>